Tonight, Twitter to suspend certain accounts deemed inappropriate. Samsung's making a nook. And Vine lets you import video. Oh, also, Verizon's plan to take on Google Play Store again. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 155 for Wednesday, August 20th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Twitter is suspending any user accounts that tweet or retweet graphic imagery showing the beheading of photojournalist James Foley by the terrorist group ISIS. CEO Dick Costolo made this announcement earlier today, and it's the second time this week that Twitter has commented on taking action against its users. Yesterday, the company said it'll delete images of the deceased at the request of family members. And as you may remember, Robin Williams' daughter said she was leaving Twitter after trolls flooded her feed with abusive messages. It is unclear how Twitter will monitor abuse and identify these tweets or accounts for removal in a timely fashion. In the case of James Foley, a spokesperson said, quote, we also terminate any account registered by a member of a designated foreign terrorist organization and used in an official capacity to further its interests. Tech News Today and other programs here on the Twit Network reported the hacking of personal information from 4.5 million patients out of the Community Health Systems, or CHS, database. Trusted Sec is reporting that this breach occurred through exploiting the Heartbleed vulnerabilities. According to an anonymous source close to the CHS investigation, the attackers were able to capture user credentials from memory on a CHS Juniper device, then log into their VPN. Once in, the attackers were able to work their way through the system and find the patient database. Popular video sharing service Vine announced some new changes to the app that a lot of its users have been asking for. Users can now import any video on their phone into the app for slicing, dicing, and publishing to other Vine users in their six-second creations. Sure, purists still say that creating Vines in camera inside the app, as has been the case until now, has helped to define the creativity of its service. Well, now users can create those six second looping videos out of any source material they might already have on their camera roll. Another tool released in the updated app includes a mute button to wipe out audio, a duplicating button that lets you repeat a shot, a focus lock feature for the front facing camera, and a torch mode, which turns on your phone's flash so you can shoot in the dark. Samsung has slightly revamped its Galaxy Tab 4 with a new Nook version, the Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. Barnes & Noble stopped designing new Nook tablets. And the Samsung tablet is a 7-inch, 1280x800 display and goes on sale today for $179. Like other large brick-and-mortar bookstores, Barnes & Noble has had trouble since competition from online retailers, other e-books, and other e-readers came onto the scene. The company recently spun off the Nook Media Division. This Galaxy Tab 4 Nook will compete with Amazon's Kindle, among others, yet has several possible advantages. One, it runs on, of course, it's the very popular Android OS, and the other, the tablet will have full access to the Google Play Store. Coming up, the high-tech chair that lets you sit while standing. And up next, I'll chat with Amira Fradi from the information about Verizon's plans to take on the Google Play Store. Uh, but first, managing your money can be a challenge. The good news is that a free and secure tool called Personal Capital solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401k, bank accounts, all those things, all on different sites with different usernames and passwords. The second is that you pay someone to manage it, and you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, your phone, your tablet, with real-time and intuitive graphs. Personal Capital has an award-winning watch app that you can download in Google Play that seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances whenever and wherever they need it. Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investment. So why wait? 
Signing up takes just a minute, and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money, and we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining me today is Amir Afradi, senior reporter for The Information. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for joining us. Now, you wrote a story today called, uh, titled Verizon Prep's Challenge to Google's App Store. And Verizon, you know, this isn't their first time <laughs> to the party. They did launch an app store back in 2010, and it's pretty difficult to compete with Google Play. I have to imagine that's part of the reason why the app store went away to begin with. How would this effort be different than Verizon's previous take? So a lot of the prior efforts to really compete with the existing app stores is that they have been individualized. So carriers have had their own individual stores. What Verizon is looking to do is build an industry coalition of other carriers around the world, as well as OEMs, Android OEMs that actually make the Android devices, and help from app developers to really get an alternative app store going. So this is not just for Verizon customers, this is for anyone who owns an Android device. That's a billion people around the world. So they really wanna create this alternative. They feel like there's a lot of opportunity and that if they can get enough partners on board and learn from past mistakes uh, of similar coalitions that have been tried, they can make something very interesting that's completely different from the kind of app store we have today. Interesting. Now, what exactly does a carrier like Verizon stand to gain from operating their own app store in a market? I mean, you know, Google's Play Store is flooded with quality apps, so it's got to be hard to compete with. What What is the kind of the value proposition there for them and, and for people interested in listing their apps there? So we have a lot of details in the story, which is at theinformation.com, of course. And I can't get to, into all of them, but Verizon and other carriers have a lot of things that they can offer that Google can't. They can discount the uh, data that apps use, right, to make them cheaper on people's data plans. Uh, there are other network APIs that they can use to help fulfill carrier billing or payments or other things. Um, and there's really a desire here to be more than just an app store. This is about trying to change the paradigm of app discovery. You've seen uh, these kind of launcher or launch screen uh, apps that companies like Yahoo and Twitter have acquired recently. And they're really all about anticipating the apps that you're going to need based on where you are, who your friends are, the time of day, all these different factors that the device is sensing or knows and can offer you the right app at the right time. So there's also that element of this. They really want to be very forward thinking. Um, it's going to be very difficult, as you point out. There's a wave of skepticism here. And believe me, uh, Verizon and all the partners it's talking to would love nothing more than for the industry or Google in particular to underestimate it, uh, that might sure. make it actually easier to get off the ground. Right, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can only think of, you know, some of the challenges here, you know, developer support, convincing developers to say, hey, yes, you should, you know, if there's any sort of tailoring their apps to the specific, uh, you know, store versus Google's or, or even Google's embedded presence on their phones. I mean, are there other challenges that uh, Verizon kind of is facing in this effort? Yeah, so we, we sort of talk about in the, in the piece a lot of the different uh, historical efforts to, to, try to, do, to, to try to do these kinds of things. And there was a big effort four years ago with dozens of carriers that try to band together. But at the end of the day, they really couldn't decide on one uh, a way for an app developer to deal with all the carriers at the same time it had to be very individualized, which sort of defeated the purpose. So they really want to, uh, they really want to make life easier for the developers. And really, you know, there's, there's a lot of reporting now and a lot of discussion about the difficulty of launching an app. Um, and there's a lot of debate about that uh, and whether it's possible or, it, you know, it's certainly not as easy as it used to be to launch an app and make it successful uh, on any mobile platform, given that there's just so many more uh, apps today than there were before. So one of the way one of the ways that they're looking to deal with that is actually allowing app developers to advertise um, through the App Store, which is something that Apple and Google currently do not do. And I know that's a very controversial kind of topic, but there are a lot of developers huge marketing budgets that really are not able to use them uh, within App Store. So this is one area that they could tackle as well. Sure. Now, finally, you did get some pushback on this story. There was a statement from Verizon spokeswoman Deborah Lewis telling Recode, quote, we have no plans to do that, been there, done that, end quote. Uh, it was quite a tweet storm I was following, uh, as you ultimately called 
Verizon's statement misleading. Can you explain what you meant there? Yeah, sure. I mean, Verizon's not really responding to the details of our piece, which is all about discussions that Verizon is having, and I can assure you, is having yeah. with all manner of potential partners, from app developers to OEMs and other carriers. Um, I don't really exactly know what they mean. I think they're sort of playing a semantic game and saying Verizon is not launching an app store, and we've done that before. We're not reporting that Verizon is launching its own app store. We're reporting that Verizon is building a coalition to launch a global app store with other partners. So I think that's kind of where the confusion lies. Yeah, and that's an important distinction right there. Amir Friday, senior reporter with the information. Really appreciate you coming on the show and talking with us today. Where can people follow your work uh, that you do for the, the site online? So it's theinformation.com, or you can follow me on Twitter, just at Amir. Excellent. Thank you so much, Amir. Appreciate it. All right, and finally, folks working on production lines in factories are used to the back-breaking realities of the job, thanks in large part, of course, to the fact that they usually stand in one place and perform repetitive tasks all day long. Nuni, a startup based in Zurich, is looking to improve this scenario with their exoskeleton system that they call the chairless chair. It attaches to the worker's thighs, feet, and hips, it's made of aluminum and carbon fiber. With the push of a button, it can go from allowing the normal mobility of its user to a static position. This allows the production line worker to continue their work while providing relief from the fatigue that can set in over the course of the workday. BMW and Audi are the first companies scheduled to test out the chairless chair solution. I think we need to get one of those here in the Twit studio. I'd sit in one of those. Uh, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. And of course, you can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today, tomorrow, and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.